Welcome to Kaleidoscape Insiders, your source for all things Kaleidoscape. I'm your host, Amanda Davis. Today, we'll be taking a behind-the-scenes look at Kaleidoscape movies, and joining us for this discussion is Gerald Corpus, Kaleidoscape's Manager of Content Operations. Welcome, Gerald. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Kaleidoscape. So uh, I manage a con content operations team. Um, we're the ones that receive and process all the mezzanine files that we receive from the studios. So when they send us a 4K package of uh, their of a title, we pull it down to our secure environment and then we process it so we can get it on the store by the electronic sell through date. So that's pretty much our team. Everything that gets on our store, that's it goes to me and my team. So Perfect. That's actually yeah. what we're here to talk about today is a little behind the scenes look at the Kaleidoscape movies. So okay. tell us a little bit more about um about what the actual process is. <clears throat> you said we receive the mezzanine files from the studios and then what exactly happens from there? Yeah, so uh look, there's a every studio has a schedule of when they're going to be releasing titles and once it once the schedule's coming up, we receive a notification from the studio saying, "Hey, sending these files um be on the lookout for it and once we receive the files we pull them down to our secure environment um uh, as soon as possible just so we have as much time as possible to work on them um and once it's in our secure environment it goes through a verification process to make sure there is no hiccups during the transfer from their secure envir environment to ours and once that's done um we are ready to process. Um, if a title, if they send us like external audio like Atmos or DTSX, uh, we have to do some pre-processing on the audio to make sure it's in the correct format because <clears throat> they give us the raw files. Uh, so make sure it's in the actual usable audio format, lossless audio format. And once that is done, then we start piecing together. Um, <clears throat> so we run a pre- still have some pre-processing so we make sure that the audio any ex external audio that they have like atmos and dtsx is correctly synced or aligned with the uh, video so we have a, a separate process for that um uh, so when we have that the studio sends us the video the audio the subtitles the, the, the captions and we take all of that and piece it into one big package um so we put, put the audio, sync it to the correctly to the video, put in the captions, and then we put it into a quick process where we can see initial package together. It, so we call it a draft. And at this point, uh, this is where we make sure that the audio is correctly synced over, that the captions are correctly aligned. And this is also the main step where we add our own, add the chapters to the, to the movie. Um, once we have all that piece together, we put it through our rigorous processing transcode. Um, and usually that it, it, it varies on how long that'll take, depending on how, how big the file is, how long the file is, and of course, how big our queue is. So that, so once that's done, uh, we, then we can pull it down and start our initial QA. Um, and what I mean by QA is we literally watched the whole movie. So we're looking for glitches. We're looking for uh, video glitches or anything um, uh, or any audio drops possibly or any typos in the captions. Um, if we do find that stuff, that's when we try to verify was it our process or what is it the actual studio file? Because things happen when you're transferring a bit files especially especially huge files so uh, once we if we verify that it's from the studio we contact them right away and usually within a day or two we get a new file and then the whole process starts over again um, but if we found that we've accidentally uh, uh, introduced something in our process then we reprocess it um, um, using what we best think would fix the problem because um, we have specific um processes that can help us especially like uh grain like grainy films mm -hmm. so 
uh, we have a preset for grainy films because we don't want to dumb down the grain because that's part of the effect of that of that movie, right? So it's so, kind of like if that was the director's intent to have a little more of a grainy exactly. aesthetic, we want to make sure we're preserving that in the yes. in our transfer. So we so we have a, a a preset for that. So like we we after our initial QA, we try to determine what is the best way to keep uh, the pretty much the director's intent and like the the actual quality of the actual video we don't want to modify it at all right so but once it passes all QA it's ready to go for the store and by the time it has EST it should be up for you guys to process now EST for for those of you who do not know what that means essentially it means like um oh, like yeah, the in home date the date yeah. that it's supposed to be available Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So the cool thing I think about what we do at Kaleidoscape is that we have this team of people who actually go and review each movie file and each movie transfer to make sure that it's up to the Kaleidoscape standard because that's sort of our you know our goal yeah. is to make every movie that is downloaded to a customer system as high quality as it can be so that we're really replicating as much as we can the director's intent you know with the minimal processing of the file with the preserving that full you know lossless audio um so it, so that's what we do for pretty much every movie that we receive well not pretty much but actually every movie we receive from studios including yes. when there's movies that are like new to 4k so like if Yes. I mean, we recently, for example, had all of the Oceans trilogy come new to 4K. So we would do the same thing when we received those files from the studios. Yeah. No, no real difference in the process there. No. Um, so what about, um, I, I think from time to time, we've received an updated file from the studio. Is that the same process? Does that follow the same process? Uh, yeah. So it, it's... So uh, for the longest time, we've referred to this as making a sandwich, right? Oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, the movies, the uh, the meat and cheese, whatever, and then audio and and the, and the captions and subtitles is the fixings, and then yeah. we package it all together between the buns. The moment <laughs> one of those ingredients have to be improved, we got to make the sandwich all over again. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there are times where it it we would receive. Um, updated Atmos files because they mm -hmm. probably feel like the the uh, the mix needed correction on their end, or it was something was improved. Um, you know, they don't we don't really get details, but um, if there's anything any improvement to the video file, to the audio files, or the captions, especially, uh, we gotta go through the process all over again. Luckily, it's just that single file we get to reuse their all the other original original files um but yeah the whole process starts all over again yeah so anytime we update a, f a movie file uh and, and you've already purchased that movie for example then if you just go onto the store you can find those updated files in your movie updates section and it's under your manage menu so that's just easy for you as a customer you can go in and, and essentially update your own movie file to the to the latest and greatest so Making it easy for you guys. Um, I think that's it. So thanks, Gerald, for joining us today. And um, again, to all of you guys, remember Kaleidoscape is the only digital movie provider with lossless audio and full reference video quality. And now you know why. So to learn more about Kaleidoscape, visit kaleidoscape.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Amanda Davis with Kaleidoscape Insiders. Be sure to like and subscribe.